just arrived after the apocalypse, Motor City. Trying to shake off the side effects of time and space travel, skin feels like tin foil, dry in the cold. Managed not to burst my fucking eardrums this time, thanks to the Mucin XD. We stroll casually across six empty lanes and go to Honest John's bar. Between the screens, blaring moving colors, neon signs populate the walls. Men lie. Count your change. Sobriety sucks. The one behind her head is blinding, so we move deeper into darkness. The neon a little farther. The aperture of my eye opens imperceptibly, a thousandth of an epstop. The lamp lights her face a little more. Her beautiful face, mouth of coral, distracts me for a moment. But then I'm back in our talk. About the limits of grievance-based politics and old anti-oppression frameworks and the need for new visionary organizing, creating new realities with our bodies and our devices. New cities where instead of monuments to greed, competition, and planned obsolescence, our realities are populated by places where we talk to the spirit in the crumpled leaves of kale and are nourished and find love. She says that to think of mixed race people only in a binary between people of color and white people is to reproduce a hierarchy of oppressions where mixed people are only lesser people of color and only slightly different from white oppressors and European colonizers. Instead, we should think of the hybrids like herself and me as a third space that creates another dimension. From the line of the binary, we open out onto a plane. I tell her, I don't know, third spaces of gender make me really nervous because there's so many spaces, like fourth, fifth, nth, each one adding another line vertically to the binary, opening infinite planes. She agrees and takes a bite of the chicken and waffles I've been eating. I sip my dragon's mead, even though the wormhole I came out of sapped all the liquid from my body. I just want to enjoy this moment. There are spells in this place, poems of intention, reminding her to follow her bliss and work for decolonization. There are faces in this place, painted images of a beautiful mujer mexicana con solo una ceja. In the mirror, the faces make a row on either side of mine. I see them when I read the moon code. In this place, they dream so many futures, and they make them real. While she's away, she let me stay in her home, but every time I lay in her bed, Adrian Marie Brown's energy seeps into me like a glowing golden mist. I'm so inspired that I can't sleep, mind on fire, glowing purple and red circuits that will connect our bodies, our dresses, and our hoodies to the local community mesh network lighting up the cast corridor with the safety of collective action. Jay said to me today, the police don't come when you call in this city, in this neighborhood. It's a problem so many of us have. And if they did come, our queer brown bodies and non-colonized names would only act as stones for their wrath to be etched into, instead of tender organs to be safely guarded like those held out in these paintings that stare back from the mirror. We have to protect each other, find the movements that make us safe, that make us strong and connected, the movements that open the doors into other realities that transform us and turn this apocalypse into a beginning. The blind midwife said so.
on the bullet train to the city where the wall fell, heading for the cement rubble of cold wars from the past, speeding towards another apocalypse from an alternate reality. The digital readout above us climbs. 199, 200, 201 kilometers per hour. The enchanting Turkish girl who went to school in New York but lives in Berlin with the exceedingly sexy smile asks me well into our conversation if I'm hetero or homo? By this point, I already know she's up for dating and her charms are so disarming. But really, a stranger on the train asked you this? I pause before I say, I'm neither. I'm trans. I'm another species. I'm a different form of matter. I'm genderqueer. I mean, I just always thought having to do something because I was a man was stupid. Isn't that how you felt about being a lady? I like everybody. They're really mostly femmes, regardless of their phenotype. She tells me about her first lesbian encounter in Beirut only a few weeks ago. She tells me about reading the grinds of Turkish coffee and proceeds to tell me my future for the coming year. It's exceedingly positive, and I think it's uncannily accurate. Some of us can see future trajectories. After we exchange a few bytes of data to allow for communication later, the train slows suddenly. We rush off into the labyrinth of escalators, loud vendors with transnational delights, endless curves scaffolding above telescoping rail lines. She walks away. I arrive at ground level, and my heart drops a few levels below the ground. As I remember, I left my fucking bag on the bullet train. She said her name meant the last moment before a raindrop hits the ground. In the city, Sam and I head to a squatted space full of lively ghosts. The crimson front of the building shows curved metal gates shaped like webs. We go through cavernous halls and multiple doors to the room where a winged angel hovers above and sings. We sit on handmade benches in tight rows. The lights dim and two monsters dance on stage. Long, sharp claws and fangs and bulging eyes, shiny fur and bushy manes, and so much affection and laughter. They are followed by the beat maker and Mad Kate, tearing through layers of costumes, bright and puffy with yellow stripes, down to skin tight, skin colored nylon that doesn't cover much and stretches around her body. She reveals her body while tracing it with a knife, singing darkly, sharing her mother's voice, an impassioned tornado in a small dark space full of love and color and queers.
apocalypse. A city definido por el muro, la línea. A city defined by a wall. A city that to get into from any direction, you have to go through a skin color checkpoint. A city where they make robots. Robots that fly in graceful arcs through the sky and use their facial detection systems to blow up thousands of people. A city where lots of people enjoy themselves and don't think about the wall. And lots of people enjoy themselves and do think about the wall and think that it protects them. A city where people think that walls and cages fucking protect us. And they call these robots drones. And they act like because the robots kill thousands of people, it's okay. We don't have to talk about it. The president can sign off on the robots killing people, and it's not the same. It doesn't really, it doesn't really happen. And in this city, I don't forget. That, I, that walls only make cages, and that I still want to work for a world where we don't put people in cages ever again.